welcome Jedi Potentials, Jedi Adherents, Jedi Knights, and even some of you may already be Jedi Masters. Welcome Jedi Path Workers. These videos will be about Jedi Path working, working the Jedi philosophy, the Jedi practices, the work with the Force, the Marshal, and the more mundane skills to some degree as part of a complete path, uh, not a partial path or a singular point of focus that is more directed. Now, before we start these videos, it's going to be very important to set down some terminology. The Jedi community is a very large place. There's a lot of places online that are referenced as the Jedi community. These places have their own views, their own ideas and ideals, and I will not attempt to define Jedi for any other group or philosophy. I am making definitions here in my terminology for the sake of being understood. I know you may have your own definitions. I don't care. The reason I don't care is because if I spend all my time trying to match up your definitions, I will say nothing. I will get nothing accomplished, and you will have gained nothing from these videos. And I will have gained nothing from doing them because I won't have helped anyone grow. So with that, let's start with the types of Jedi. Now, these are your broad working groups. These are your overarching groups. There will be variations, and we'll get into that a little bit. Jedi Realist is probably the most common right now, or the most uh, well-known. There's a heavy focus on practical skills and philosophical study. How that is put into practice really depends on one group to another. The concept of the Force is left very, we'll say loosely defined, if at all. And the requirements of extended skill sets, or even knowledge or ability to understand those skill sets, is, we'll say, not a requirement. I think that's the way I want to put that. It's not a requirement. There, there's really no necessity to that. It is practical skills, things like CPR, um, knowing what to do when there is a legal crisis, such as you know police arriving, how to be helpful there if there's an emergency what to do and what not to do to help the fire department, things of that nature, along with practical skills such as de-escalation and personal interaction skills. The philosophical study ranges, again, from one group to the other. Uh, the level of introspection will often depend on who is teaching, and it, a lot of times it is more book work. That's fine. That is Jedi Realist, and I welcome them to be Jedi Realists. Jedi Religionist is a, not really an offshoot of that, but I would say that they differ in that there is a definite worship of the Force, and while realists also hold to those codes of philosophy within some degree, within some idealism of it, the Jedi Religionist treats it as a religion. There is honoring the Force, there's honoring those ideals, there may be deep meditations or worship or prayer, and they are focusing on the Force as a kind of higher power. So the Force moves from, it could be anything, it could be an idea, to we know it's there, we may not define it. That's a Jedi religionist. But it is something for sure, and it is tangible to the religionist. It has to move out of the realm of idea, whereas for a realist, it could remain in that. These things do bleed over with each other. There are realists who are part religionist or complete religionist. There are religionists who are part realist. And there are path workers. Now, path workers, uh, there's a, a lot that goes into being a path worker. And the definition I'm going to give is going to be very short, and I'm going to actually break it down so you understand where I'm coming from. I will not hit on areas I cannot speak on as completely. That wouldn't be right of me as a Jedi. So, as Jedi path workers, they're ones who work with the path and training in the arts. That would be things like martial arts, mystical arts, and they draw from the mythos for their developments. So one of the things you'll hear me say at various points in various videos, I never want Jedi to have to go out and learn magic or mysticism. I'll, I'll get into some of that more, 
directly. There, there's many ways to do path working in this. I would say that as path workers, we have to study art's inherent and implicit in the fiction. So things like meditation, things like energy work, as we call it these days, that's a new age term, but the new age methods are partially stemmed from and the stories of this partially stem from those. So there's this interweaving where they both influence each other. So the new age arts of that type of mysticism would certainly be worth looking into. But if it's ritual and rote or dogmatism or correspondence, Jedi are not required to have those. And quite frankly, personal opinion on this, that slows them down. A direct work with the force is inherent to a Jedi path worker. And it is essential. Now, Jedi path workers can be broke down into two large categories from there. Orthodox Jedi path workers and legendary Jedi path workers. And that's not meant to be um, boastful for the legendary, which I belong to. So I'm sure someone will say, well, look at that arrogant man there. And I think everybody has a bit of arrogance. If you're going to take this name, you have to have a little bit of arrogance because you're going to go out there and try to help people and that's an arrogant thing because you you may fail you may fail drastically and that takes a little bit of arrogance to get up and do that so i'm not going to say that i have no arrogance i'm going to say that i, I know where it's at uh, with orthodox jedi path worker they use all of the fiction in a complete form but they draw more from the most common and available forms of media now why is that well the orthodox jedi path worker whatever comes out within Jedi stories in the canon and possibly in the legends. Orthodox pulls from legends as well. A lot of people do. And I'll, and I'll hit on that because Legendary does sometimes. Um, they pull from it, but their core is defined as any aspect. So the Orthodox Jedi Path Worker is a looser definition. It's Orthodox because the common view of the Jedi community is that the thing none of this can be defined. In fact, Jedi, without all of these things that I'm adding to it, has no real solid definitions. It has ideas, people make up documents, they do all kinds of things to try to solidify it, and then they immediately say, well, the, but you can't really define it. So what I'm doing is I'm giving you definitions. I'm giving you something you can sink your teeth into when you start work with this to find where you're going and to advance yourself. So this, that's what this first episode is really about. So that's the orthodox. They, they pull from everything and everything's equally valid. And a lot of times your Orthodox Jedi will argue with each other over what is more valid and what isn't, but generally speaking, they're very live and let live in their own way. I have a lot of respect for the Orthodox Jedi path workers because as a path worker, they still draw on those arts. They still have to draw on the martial arts, at least an understanding of what they are, how the force flows through them. For Jedi path worker, I do want to say also, the force is a real thing and it is to some degree defined as a universal flow and energy you may have other religions i will get into that in a moment then you have the legendary jedi path workers they're ones who draw from the legends continuity now the reason they draw from that is it is static the legends continuity will not grow it can't disney can't grow it comic books can't grow it Lucas, if he ever takes the reins again, since it's already been delineated as Legends once, we know all of the books that contribute to the Legends continuity, and we draw from that. Now, for myself, I specifically will be drawing from the Luke Skywalker era of Legends. So, what you're going to get from me is going to be from that, and heavily focusing on the Jedi Academy trilogy era, the I Jedi era, and then pulling from the NJO, which was then pulling from the prequel era some. And then I will pull from some of the prequel era. But everything that I pull from, I'm going to do my best to make sure, as I do in my day-to-day -day life, that it is internally consistent with those books. And the reason I, I, I canonize this in this way, the reason I have doctrine, as a very good friend of mine said, it's all about doctrine knowing what your doctrine is. The reason I take my doctrine in that way is because in having that as a basis, I can always check back to something very focused, very simple. Almost all Jedi agree on the concept of the Jedi Code being important. What it means to them really breaks down. With the realist, it could mean anything. And as long as it has some importance to you, 
or you develop a variation of it. So the realists really are very good at getting away from the mythos completely when they can. That's fine. That's very good for some people. For some people, mythologies are very rough to integrate into existing religious views or values. I get that. Some people have to hold on to their existing religion. Some people cannot mesh the two. Or some people are called to their to their previous religion. Realists very much are good with integrating that in that way, though. With the religionist, the code becomes a little more introspective, I would say, for most people. Again, you can't speak for everyone. Someone's going to say, well, what about me? What about this? What about that? I get it. I really do. And I appreciate it. The diversity is the spice of life. And I've learned a lot from people that are outside of my viewpoint. For the path worker, the code is the code. We have codes, we have oaths, and we hold to them. Now, we'll get more on the code later, but a real quick note if you're coming into this. Most people talk about the, the Jedi Code, and they talk about there is no emotion, there is peace, etc., etc. The is no code, some people call it. The duality code, others call it. Uh, the, the code of oppositions, I've heard it called a million things. And I've called it a million things. That's why I don't try to, to name it. And calling it the Anderson Code is a throwback from people who didn't do their research. It's technically the role-playing game manual code of 1987, roughly. I think maybe a little later. So, eh. You do what you do on that. But for the path worker, that is a mantra. That is a way of integration. It's a way of connecting to the Force and understanding the Force. It's not how we live our day to day, but we do try to come back to it in moments of crisis and we try to come back to it when we have to do things that are difficult or when we have to put ourselves above and beyond what, we're, what we normally would be. Uh, then you have the Skywalker Code, which is, is really uh, from the Phantom Menace era is when it first came out. It is more in line with the ideas of Jedi or Guardians. And many of us take that and we, we tweak it a little bit to remove things like Galaxy from it. Because I don't know about you, but I've yet to have to protect anyone outside of Earth, at least in a direct way. Um, I will get into things like mystical concepts of planar travel and stuff like that in the far future of these videos eventually. But that doesn't count as outside of Earth, in my opinion. And anything you do there is eh, experiential. It's real for you. And it should be respected as real for you, nor should, nor should anyone else say it isn't. Um, but you shouldn't push that on someone, but if it's part of a path you're teaching, you should push it as important. So we'll get into things like that later. With the path workers, we need to break that down even further. So we have Jedi guardians who focus more on the martial aspect. Now I say more because the force and the practical skills are still important. Generally speaking, the practical skills for the path worker are the lowest rung in a lot of ways. We want to know how to do basic CPR. We want a basic understanding of how to help people in direct environments, but we use the force to augment any of those skills. We use our senses more than anything, and we use the ability to use a subtle alteration of the environment with the force as necessary. It's not big things. Most of us can't do any level of telekinesis. The ones that can, it's spinning a pinwheel, or maybe we've moved a pin once, you know, a pin on like, you know, writing implement. Um, for Jedi Guardians, they focus on the martial aspect primarily. A Jedi Guardian may not have a huge amount of experience in the mystical areas. Now, I will say, there's a lot of bleed over for some people. Some people will hit all of these criteria. Some will hit two of them. That's fine. These titles are to help differentiate only experientially so that when you begin training, you have areas you can hone towards that have an interest and meaning to you. You still need to understand some of the force to be a guardian. Uh, you have to have a, a deep respect for it, and a, you will still do deep meditations, but you will always be coming from a somewhat martial aspect. I have a great love of guardians. Uh, some would say I was a guardian at one point. I'll say I was a man trying to be the best mystic that I could be, which meant I had to shore up my weaknesses in the guardian areas. Because to be a Jedi... You want to always be growing. And if you find you have an area that you are very good in, then you grow in areas that you're not sometimes to augment that. Now, Jedi mystics focus on the Force and the mysteries of the Force. Jedi mystics would be the ones who have to study world religions, but also ceremony, 
ritual, magic, things of that nature. They are not compelled to use it. They have to understand it, to understand how it moves the Force. They have to understand how the Force interties with it. Jedi mystic should not be preaching the necessity of ritual. And I say this because the Force doesn't have four elements. The Force is the Force. That's it. Even the light and dark are constructs we use to understand our connection to it and our influence or greater ideas of balance, uh, ideas of chaos and harmony within systems of things that are part of this vast allness that is the Force. So for the mystic, more time is spent in contemplation of the Force. More time is spent in deep meditations and in some study of other mystic areas. Now, a mystic is not compelled or required to know every single form of mystical art out there, but they should have a, at least a basic understanding of core ideas that are universally applicable across large fields, like how ritual works and why it is believed to work among many groups. Uh, why correspondences are so useful, either as a mental hinge or as a reality for those people, so that when they interact with them as a mystic, if they have to provide guidance, they can do that. Jedi healers. All right, I love you guys. There's so few of you, too. Um, and I say that because this is probably the smallest subset of the Jedi. They focus more on the healing arts. They will focus on the Force as it concerns healing. So you will see a lot of Reiki masters who have also studied Qigong. Sorry, Qigong. I am working on that as a pronunciation thing. That's one of my things I'm working on. Uh, as they study Qigong, uh, maybe Tai Chi, uh, they will still have some understanding of the martial, just as the mystic will, a little, because they have to understand how the Force integrates from those somewhat mystical art forms like Qigong. But for the healer, this is all focused on healing others, as well as healing himself, sometimes initially. Sometimes that's where the healer path starts. They will incorporate things like herbal medicines and homeopathic treatments. They will study healing arts from many different cultures, often deep diving into Chinese medicine, as it is interconnected with the ideas of the Force and inherent from which the Force is drawn from. There are many, many, many ways to be a path worker that I have not listed. I've listed these three core ones because they are the most common you will find and be drawn to. My advice is to start with one of them that calls to you. For most people, it's Guardian. Let's face it, it's flashy. My advice also is if you start on the Guardian, start with empty hand forms. You will always have your hands. You will not always have a stick. I preference my art form for hand arts to include a walking stick because of injuries that I have, because of weight gain that has come with those injuries, and because I feel that it's a weapon of peace. I will address the lightsaber right now, uh, once, and probably again in the future, but for right now, once and only once. Lightsabers are toys. If you are using them as a guardian, as a stand-in, for a practical sword fighting, and you often carry a walking stick as a primary weapon, as a sword, so a sword implement, while it is off-balanced and inefficient, I understand the need for inspiration, and if you're doing that as a bridge, I would still say you're within the Pathworker group. If you're not using that as a bridge to a practical defensive art for yourself and others, and an expression of the Force in that, so it has to cover both, it has to do both, especially for those Guardians. I would recommend reconsidering your position. You don't have to. I can't make you. I'm not going to reach through the screen and, and do something that makes you rethink your life. Unless maybe my words do. But the reason I say this is because we get a very bad reputation as an art form and as a community when all people see are glow sticks, glowing weapons, non-weapons, because... They break so easily. The, the tips pop off. I, I have one. I built one. And let me tell you, I wouldn't want to take it into a fight, even though I built one that I'd hoped that would be able to. After a very careful examination of the properties of the materials, sad to say, I just don't see it being useful, and I see it as making us look like we are potentially crazy in emergencies. And if I'm running towards someone and I'm carrying that, it could offset them and make them run away. And that's fine. You may differ on this. 
This will be coming from my point of view. You're welcome to have your own point of view. I'm going to stop saying that as much eventually. And the reason I'm starting this out with that so often is because when I start gearing up to get into more detail on how to do this and be this, I'm not going to be apologetic. This is your one opportunity to understand that I'm not trying to force feed you. If you feel I'm force feeding you after this video, what more am I supposed to do? Not speak? Not be me? There's a subtle pressure in parts of the Jedi community for that as well. And I respect that. Now, you'll notice that I've left out things like lightsaber focus enthusiast groups. Saber enthusiast groups often called Jedi enthusiasts by a few people. Um, I personally don't like either. I like saber enthusiasts more than Jedi enthusiasts because I don't really qualify them as Jedi. They don't have any concept of the Force many times. And it is all about lightsaber drills. And that's fine and, and sparring with them. And you know what? I have no problem that they do it. But a Jedi path worker, they are not. And certainly not a legendary one. And certainly not one who pulls from the Skywalker era. So I would be a legendary Jedi path worker of the Skywalker era. That makes it pretty easy to figure out who I am at this point, right? So with this, what about ranks? What about ranks? What about ranks? What about ranks? Everyone wants a rank. Everyone wants a title. You need a title. You got to feel good. Got to have that title. Jedi's not enough. Jedi Guardian's not enough. Jedi Mystics need a rank. I said potentials, adherents, knights, and masters. Now I'm going to define that. Jedi potential. You are one who is hoping to become a Jedi. You've got the joys of the first steps. Your mind is open. You're clear of predispositions. Something in this called to you. Maybe the Force is calling to you. Maybe you're just inspired. You're a potential. You haven't done training yet at that phase. You have not moved forward as a path worker yet. And this is a great place to be. It's fun. It's full of, of wonder. You have all of these big dreams. And some of those big dreams you will fulfill. You will not levitate a Buick. You just won't. But you might move a pinwheel. Moreover, you might sense when you need to be at the right place at the right time. And that, that's valuable. Jedi adherent. You have invested in the path. You've done some training, either with others in a direct form or on your own. You're not ready to help others on the path, either learning to grow, nor are you at a point where we can say that you've developed a skill set that is safe for you to use to help others in the world. You may be using the force to sense, but your senses may be off to some degree. Now, to be fair, everyone senses something and, and gets it wrong once in a while, even at the upper levels from this. But for you, it's almost a coin flip with a weighted average. So you got a 65% chance of being right, and then you have to double check and fact verify, and you have to look through all of this stuff. Your senses are not yet honed. Your ability to influence the Force is not yet honed. From a martial perspective, if you're a Guardian, you may be somewhere around Green Belt at this point. Maybe even Yellow Belt or White Belt in a martial art. You may have just picked up an art form like boxing and be mixing it with other spiritual-based arts like Qigong so that you can offset some of the brutality of that art form. I would recommend that as someone who studied boxing. Uh, if you're going to go that road, you want to you want to mix it with something else. I always did a lot of Qigong when I boxed. So you're at the start. You've just made it to the gym. You've just started the meditations, but you are investing. But as, as Yoda quoted, you, uh, you're not, or well, Vader, actually, you're not a Jedi yet. And that's because Jedi really starts to be used as a name for people. Most of the time in the mythos, when they get to the marker of night. Now, what does night mean? You are active on the path. Your skill set is complete enough to use it to help yourself, to help others, to change the world, to be a force of good, to bring the light to others. Jedi in 
The legend's continuity is once said to mean light bringer. You are bringing the light. That is valuable and important. It is no more valuable than being an adherent or a potential in the form of we look higher at you or we look lower at you. No, potentials are some of my favorite people because they have that wonder. They believe they can do anything. And adherents often still believe that anything is possible. They haven't found their limits yet and they haven't started to push them. And it's wondrous. It reminds me of how much I was able to grow when I thought like that. And it reminds me to think like that when I meet adherents. Knights are a little bit more grounded in their own practice. This is where some of that ego and arrogance can start to develop too. So be careful if you're at this phase. It's really easy to look at this and say, I know everything. I'm a knight now. Very easy. Very easy. It, it's a trap. And the bigger trap that comes after is on the way. And we all know that name, I think, right? Jedi Master. I'm going to strip away everything you know. When the term was first used in the movies, it meant teacher. To quote Lucas in one of, well, to paraphrase, Yoda is a Jedi Master. He wouldn't be any good in a fight. The reason I pull from the Legends continuity the way I do is because things like this got changed, and now Jedi Master means uh, either high efficient capability or rank in, in uh, the realist orders, uh, often you have authority. You are authoritative uh, with a mastery of a certain set of skills. Or it means master of all, you know, the greatest, the best, the grand high poobah of the Jedi. I would almost prefer that be the title. When I use the term Jedi Master, it means you have moved to a phase from night where you are no longer questing outward as much to help others, but you have cultivated an awareness of all of the arts sufficient that you are focusing as a teacher. Night is the questing arm. That, the branch that goes out and makes the difference. Masters are the ones that teach others and help others grow and often are still knights. You know, Master Knight is a rank, a title. It is an important one too. A Master Knight is still a knight. But Master means teacher. And it's a heavy burden. And the reason it's a heavy burden is not because you're the Grand High Poobah and if you mess up, it's going to destroy the path. The path will be there. And the community will be there. There's nothing that's going to shake that. But as a Jedi Master, you are a teacher. And so you are observed, and when you fail, you have to make sure that you let your students, let the people learning from you know that that failure does not impart a truth of the path that you should be trying to fail in that way or directing your energy and efforts to making that mistake frequently. Many a Jedi Master has faced many a trial they have failed. I think Jedi Masters probably face more trials that they fail than they have succeeded. I believe that it's in the sequels that said something about, you know, being a master is growing from your failures. As I said, that's in, in line with the Legends continuity, so I'm going to pull from it. It's useful. It's the same core messages. We see that repeated in the Legends so many times it gets funny. Uh, it's almost a running gag. You know, Luke Skywalker messes up and then then fixes himself. Well, he, he comes to understand his mistakes and grows. Uh, he doesn't fix himself because it's not that he's broken. It's that he's growing. Always. So for a master, it doesn't mean you stop growing. If anything, it means you've got to grow more. And you have to be able to help others grow. And you are now focusing on acting as a teacher. You have a responsibility to many more people at that point this does not put you above a knight now this is the way i am using the ranking structure most people in the bigger jedi community don't have potential don't have adherent knight is a debated term but it basically just means yo you passed some tests you have been given the rank and master means yo you've passed some more tests and you've been given the rank You've, you've done some work, you've put some time in, some combination of measurable variables have been met. In my mind, it's more esoteric. If you're a knight and all you've done is done some work, as a path worker, you're not a knight. You're an adherent who completed assignments. 
Now, if those assignments have led you to a skill set and you're able to help others, maybe. But again, path worker point of view. I'm not going to put this on the realists. I'm not going to put this on the religionists. I'll try to relate it a little bit right now in case you're coming from one of those areas and you're there going, but Carl's, it doesn't look like that where I'm at. It might not. Right now, there is no place where path workers have a singular point of study. That's right, none. We're scattered. We are, we're scattered like the rebellion against the empire. We are not super popular. We are often called fanciful. We are called arrogant because we speak from our point of view and we don't preface every single sentence with, well, there's 5,000 ways to be a Jedi and 18 paragraphs on that before we speak. We speak about the path. That can be rough. But because of that, you are not likely coming from a path worker background if you are with a group. Now, you may be doing path working within it. You may be a path worker. You may have had the advantage of a master, as in rank, but also a teacher, who is helping you grow and you are treating it as a path working. That happens in the religionists. It happens in the realists. Because they are less defined, they have more area for them to also have path workers within them. Path workers are more defined so there are religionists and realists who are in the path work and in some ways it's kind of a requirement that the heavier philosophical bend and the focus on practical skills of the realist and the acceptance of the force not being there it's a division so when i go through these ranks i want to make that clear one more time this is for the path workers this is so you as a path worker when you start to look at these words change it in your head a little bit the idea also, when you're pulling from the mythos, the mythology, you know, the mythology does break down knight and master into a term of level of power at different points. And I would say the reason for that is at the lower level of the spectrum as a knight, you are focusing on one area. So you have one skill set that is you are immersed in and that you are part of one aspect of the force within it as a Jedi in these skills. As a master, to be able to teach to everyone to be able to teach a guardian if you're a mystic to be able to teach a mystic if you're a guardian as a master you've had to elevate above that you've had to gain more and therefore you are more powerful because the force has grown within you do i believe that is true to some small degree and the reason i say that is i've met many knights who are vastly powerful but can't focus it to teach so they're not masters i've met adherents that are vastly powerful but they don't they're not knights. They're not, they're not yet fully within the skills. And also the philosophy. The philosophy is very important. I'm going to borrow from the old Ashla Knights. Uh, this is an organization that existed. Who knows? Maybe it'll be back one day. The Jedi community has a way of things, you know, dying off and coming back over the years. But Ashla, the big push was philosophy, practice, and path. So I'm going to tell you, philosophy, practice, and path... You do have to have all three. Ashla is where I did a lot of my training when I was younger, especially when it was Jedi Ashla Knights. Now it is Ashla Knights. I did some training within the order there. I have a strong association and connection with it. I don't know that I would give it an official rank in public at this moment, although I have been recognized by an Ashla Master as having the position of a knight in a in moments of need and i won't take that as an official i'm going to put the bars on my collar as it will and, and take it as a rank i will say that that is where i get a lot of my background so if i if you've been around the community for you know 20 some years and this sounds like i'm rehashing some of the ashla stuff you're right so with that we've now covered the terminology that can be the end of this video why so much? A 34 minute plus video. Well, because if I don't set this terminology down, I'm going to spend the next 50 videos arguing it in comments. Instead, I'm going to remind everyone that the first video covers the terminology and that we thank you. And that if you have a different view of the terminology, we welcome you to share it in your own video somewhere else. Because I have a limited level of not really patience, but time and willpower 
to repeat myself over and over again. Despite that some of this video has been that too. So that closes us for today. Join us next time because in order to go further, I won't, I'll have to get into my history a little bit as a Jedi. And I have to address the elephant in the room. So that's coming in the next video. I thank you. May the force guide and protect you.